Hi guys, I thought we'd want to read the scary ending, so I'm gonna record that one first, but I will record all the endings for you guys. So we're in Mick Morris. This is chapter one of the scary ending. We entered through the door into the dimly lit museum. It was darker than we thought, since the only light was the nighttime lighting and the moonlight streaking in from the huge arched glass windows on one side of the museum. We dug out our flashlights and knew we had to be super quiet because there seemed to be a lot of security around. But oddly enough, once we were inside the museum, we didn't see anyone. Maybe they were all on a break. This place is wild, said Sissy. I smiled and nodded, knowing that wild would be putting it mildly if we encountered the thing we had seen earlier. We quickly ducked into the furniture display area. It was hard to keep Sissy from looking at all the exhibits. Oh, look at this cool home furnishing area. Hey, what's this phone? She asked, picking it up. And there's a picture of the phone. But seconds later, she slammed down the phone as a look of horror came to her face. What? What is it? Nathan and I asked. Look, it says you can hear a conversation about this house if you pick up this phone. But when I did it, it was nothing but horrible, snarling sounds. Nathan and I carefully picked up the phone, but all we heard was a recording of two ladies talking about their new furniture. Maybe you got some static, I said, trying to calm her down. Believe me, that was not static, Sissy shuddered. We realized this was going to be a little freakier than we had planned. The place was almost dark as Nathan and I glanced at each other while we slid deeper into the museum. We cautiously moved towards the aviation area. Hey, you guys, have you thought about what you're going to do if we actually see one of those gremlin thingies? Sissy's voice cracked. Well, hopefully catch it, Nathan replied. But how? She asked. Not sure yet, I replied. Well... What about with that? Sissy asked as she pointed to a giant net hanging in a display area. Not a bad idea, I said as we moved towards it. Mick, you know you can't touch that. These are historical items, said Nathan. We want to protect this place from the gremlins, not make it worse. You're right, I said as I moved away. But just as we got about five feet away, the net fell off its hooks. I walked back, picked it up, and carefully put it back. But the second we turned around, it fell down again. That's weird, I said as I turned to go back and pick it up again. But a shiny black streak went by my face, and the net flew up and landed right over my head. Ouch! Did you guys see that? Did you see it? I asked. Uh, yeah, said Nathan, not knowing whether to laugh or freak out as I took the giant net off my head. Watch out, I yelled. From behind Nathan and Sissy, an old wooden chair came flying right at them. They ducked just in time. It hit the display wall and bounced to the ground. When we turned to see what was happening, there it was, the ghastly little gremlin. It was sitting on one of the antique couches with its little legs crossed and its arms stretched out as if it was just relaxing. It had the most ghastly, wide tooth grin on its face, but it didn't sit there long. It jumped up and began to spin at super speeds right at us. Chapter two. All we could see was a shiny black streak. Run, I yelled as we grabbed a sissy, practically dragging her with us. We ran through the maze of exhibits as fast as we could, but it was no use. Within seconds, it was right in front of us. It flattened itself out like a pancake, sticking on a clear plastic divider right in front of where we were running. Turn around, screamed Nathan, but the minute it saw us, it launched itself at us again, like a rubber slingshot. Luckily, it missed us. It was going so fast that it slid across the shiny wood floor and BAM! It crashed right into one of the huge pillars and fell to the ground. For a second, there was silence. But then came this loud, eerie howl. Eee! And it began to move. This way, I yelled as we ran towards the aviation area, just hoping we might find an answer to why or how it was there. We ran under the enormous silver jet that was suspended above the entrance to the plane area. We thought for a second we had lost the freakish little gremlin, 
But the next thing we knew, it was running right at us, just staring at us and laughing its evil chuckle. Then it began to spin by us, its black, glossy skin with tufts of fur moving at lightning speed. We ran straight ahead, but it was hot on our trail. Nathan, over there, I screamed. Grab the other end of that propeller. And there's a picture of the propeller. We picked up the heavy wooden propeller and at just the exact same moment, the gremlin hit the propeller with his, soup, his arm super hard and ricocheted off of it. It had come at the propeller so fast. This part's gross, guys. It had come at the propeller so fast that it cut its arm right off. Ew! screamed Sissy. We carefully moved to look at the tiny gremlin. It was completely still. We didn't know what to do. Well, we we can't just let it lay there, cried Sissy. Poor thing, she said as she moved towards it. Poor thing, I exclaimed. That poor thing just tried to attack us. Its tiny arm was right next to its body as the creepy little gremlin began trembling. Sissy grabbed her myth solver rubber band off her wrist. Here, let's wrap this around the wound. As we bent over, our stomachs turned. It was the most shocking thing we'd ever seen in our lives. I think I'm going to be awful and leave this here, guys. And the next time we'll pick up, I'll re finish reading the scary ending. Bye, guys.